Welcome everyone, this is Division 2 now, uh, start of the new season between Matt Powell, who's the recorder at the bottom of the screen, and Tyler Adams at the top. Uh, we're going to watch some legacy action. First round, so you can see they've got no points. We're looking at uh, Matt Powell's hand, so it looks like he's playing Sultai Control. I think that's what they call it. Um, as I say every season, I've been doing this for about six or seven seasons now, but I'm still not, I'm not a leg legacy expert, so I don't know if this is considered Sultai Delva or Sultai Control. I believe it's Sultai Control. An ancient tomb could be anything from Tyler. Uh, he's Tyler's more of a legacy specialist. Kevin, I can't see what that, that's naming, unfortunately. Yes, I can. It named Eldrazi, I can tell you. So, uh, the same deck I played week one, Legacy Eldrazi. Uh, I'm going to be posting that a little bit later on against Dylan. And you can see the Eye of Ugin there confirms it. So here comes Thought Not Seer. Uh, bit of a odd one here because Thought Not's going to take something. You can see uh, Matt just let it resolve because what's it going to take? I'm guessing the Brainstorm. Uh, the problem is that the ba or the Baleful Strix because I was going to I was going to say the Baleful Strix is a real nuisance for uh, for the Eldrazi deck to deal with because it's got Death Touch. I don't like taking the Force of Will there because um, he he can still, as you can see here, he's going to brainstorm, uh, he's going to exile the brainstorm to the Force of Will, so he could still use the second Force of Will. Uh, what he, sh I think Tyler should have done was taken the brainstorm so that he couldn't find anything, then if he wanted to use the Force of Will, he would have been forced to give up the second Baleful Strix or the uh, brainstorm for it. Of course, uh, the, the alternative thinking that he could argue back is that if he did draw a second blue source, he would have two Force of Wills to deal with. Now you can see here Matt's just playing defense with the little 1-1 one -one with its death touch. I kind of like Baleful Strix in, uh, in Legacy because it draws a card when it comes in. By, by itself, the card is just absolute garbage. Or oh, I shouldn't say that, but it's, it's not a good card in any other format. It would n never see play in Modern, I don't think. But because of the way Legacy is constructed, it's super powerful in Legacy. Uh, but uh, Matt's just hitting all the land drops here, but he's just not finding anything that he wants. I think he probably, yeah, he he's going to shuffle. I'm a bit surprised there. He had a fetch land and he's got a fetch and play. He could have just taken that brainstorm off the top and then shuffled it away with the polluted delta. Uh, by the way, my lighting is a bit off. I don't know why it's so dark today. Uh, it's kind of making me think I might buy a, some sort of a lamp. Now, on the other side here, Tyler's starting to build up quite a board presence. And I don't see how Matt is going to deal with this because his best card that I can think of off the top of my head is going to be a Gurmag Angler, which obviously outpowers all of those. But... Um, but cards like Mattery Shaper are just pure uh, card value. And the other problem here for, for Matt is that once Tyler finds his Endbringer, he's just going to be able to shoot down all these 1-1s. One uh, now this one here, is he doing it? He's doing it after combat with the Colligan's Command. I, I don't really... <laughs> I hate to keep saying things that I don't like, but... When, when you play against Legacy Eldrazi, I, I think you know that they would be playing four Chalice of the Voids in the main, which is, could be a problem for your deck. So he, he might have wanted to have kept that um, that Colligan's Command to deal with one of the Chalices. That's inevitably go and he, as I say it, here comes the Chalice. He's going to play Chalice for two. I'm not sure what he's trying to get with that, because we've already seen one Baleful Strix, and the other one... Well, two more are in play. I think I would have played that Chalice for one. You can, but you can see here, Snapcaster is going to stop the Chalice. Oh, sorry, Chalice is going to stop the Snapcaster. Or oh, he's going to cast it into it. He's forgotten about the Chalice. This is like classic, classic uh, Chalice of the Void play. You just forget them all the time. And of course, this is X-Mage and a good opportunity to remind everybody of the rules. You can't get a rollback with that because... Um, if you did that in real life, the same thing would happen. No rollbacks. Uh, 
Now, he keeps swinging in this Mattery Shaper because when Mattery Shaper dies, he reveals the top card. If it's three or less mana cost, then he gets to play it. Um, you can see Matt, I think, is trying to get maximum value out of the Hymn to Turak. He's not going to do it anymore. He's just going to fire it off. I quite like... Oh, no, he's not. I was going to say, I quite like that decision because Tyler hasn't played anything, so my guess is he's holding something that requires a little bit more mana. Two, four, five... <laughs> and Tyler gets caught by his own mimic. Okay, the last card's a thought not seer. Does he? Yeah, he's going to force a will that. And that, that, that was like, oh no, actually he played it through the cavern, so it can't be counted. Uh, so he, he lost a force of will, but it's, he pitched the. Oh, he's had enough. He's going to concede. He pitched the baleful strix, which he couldn't play anyway because of the chalice. Interesting and Snaring Bridge has come in. I don't believe Aljazi... I might be wrong, but I don't believe Aljazi has anything in their list that can beat that card. Except to play a whole heap of, say, Aljazi Mimics and Endless Ones for two. One or two and go under it. And, and uh, again, apologies, my nose is really gunked up from a bad flu, so I probably sound a bit off as well. And so here, here we go, brainstorms this time with, that's the classic legacy move, brainstorm with the fetch land. So you can get rid of some crap. I don't know what he wants to get rid of here because this is this puts him in an awkward position because whatever he puts back, if, if he needs to use the mana, he's going to have to shuffle those things away with the scolding tarn. You can see he's keeping the bolt. I'm, I'm kind of a bit surprised that the bolt stayed in because... You could see in the first game, here we go, he's going to crack now. He wasn't interested in um, removing these little three-powered creatures. Uh, so this is a situation where, yeah, I'd put back two lands and then you can... No, not those two. I was going to say you can put back two lands. Well, it doesn't matter, I guess. And then um, you can play the fetch and shuffle one away. Looks like he actually wants them, so he's playing towards a Jace. So he can play Baleful... I don't know why he's doing that now. You can see a, a flood of fetch lands uh, coming in for him. But it's, it's, it's looking kind of ominous because uh, Tyler's up to... T he, can, he can play something for five, uncounterable. I, I'd be actually be curious to see whether the, the Force of Wills are still in hand for Matt. He might be tempted, particularly on when he's um, early in the game, he might want them to stop the... Now, this is a big problem. He might want the Force of Wills to stop the Chalice. But other than that, they wouldn't have any targets with the Caverns. I think he's pretty happy with that trade, a Baleful Strix for the Reality Smasher with the Death Touch. Still takes four, but... And now he's got a Surgical, so he's going to be able to Surgical that Smasher if he wants to. I think if he doesn't, he must want a Thought Not Seer. And he's going to start to go to work. No, he's not. He's going to brainstorm. I probably like the brainstorm better because you can see Tyler's got four cards in hand and a lot of mana. So um, he's probably still got a lot of options available. I'm, I am I kind of want a surgical that Reality Smasher because you think of the cards that are going to beat him. Reality Smasher's got haste. Jace is just straight up dead to it. So we'll see here if he's going to fire it off in response. Now he's going to let it resolve, is he? Because the, the Diabolic Edict is going to kill that Thought Not Seer. So it might force Tyler to take the Edict. Or t Tyler's playing the long game, he takes in Snaring Bridge. I, I like that choice as well. But Tyler knows about the Culligan's Command now, so the GTA might not be too long for this world. Oh, 
he moved the mouse, but he didn't do it. What's he? What does he want with the surgical extraction? I'm curious to know. <laughs> Thinking, I think he's got to crack the crack the fetch first. Why is he? He could have cracked the fetch first and used the polluted delta to pay for it. I'm not sure why he wants to keep the delta. Now, two cards left in hand. What he might want to do here is destroy the artifact and kill the sh reshaper. With the reshaper trigger on... The oh no, he can't do it with... The I was going to say he can edict, but he can't with it because he's one mana short. Yeah, but if he cracked that delta previously and used it to play, pay for the angler, he could have got the thought not seer right here with the diabolic edict. If Tyler's got any sort of removal spell, uh, yeah, I think you let him have the spirit guide. That's garbage. He can't actually do anything with it. So here comes Surgical now. This is going to let us have a look at um, what's going on on Tyler's hand. Okay, so Smasher is gone. In response, he's going to dismember the Gurmag Angler, so... Jace will survive, though. A Wasteland and an Endless One in hand. You see the four Chalice of the Voids are still in there. Two Ratchet Bombs have come in. So the Endless One's going to come down next turn, so Diabolic Edict is not going to work. Which means that Jace is just going to die. A 7-7 seven, seven Endless One. Well, actually, if he cast the Diabolic Edict here, it would be really interesting to see which creature, creature Tyler would give up. Culligan's Command not too good here. I think you want to zero Jace and look for answers. He's just going to see first what he wants to give up. Gives up the Thought Knots here, so he's going to give him a card. Not the card you want. Yeah, I think Zero Jace first. The Culligan's Command is not doing anything except getting the, the last unknown card. It's a two turn clock. So he's going to give up the Jace to get rid of the Endless One. See what he's going to get rid of here. Okay, so he discarded the Endless One. So that's probably a bit of a concern for Matt, because if he's getting rid of that Endless One, what's he kept? We know he doesn't have it. Uh, re reality Smashes, they're gone. Oh, it's another Thought Knots here. Played through the cavern. Baleful Strix is down. And he's got two turn clock on the board. Diabolic Edict is not good here because he'll give up the reshaper. Uh, he probably, sh if he's going to fire it off, he just should have just consistent magic to play that beforehand. Doesn't make a difference, but it's the sort of things to. So he doesn't want to play the Chalice for zero. Okay, he's found a Snapcaster. This will be able to... He can...
get the edict back and get a card. So at 9 8, he's just surviving here. I think the only problem is for Matt is that Tyler has a lot more powerful top decks, and that's a really bad draw for this turn. He can hard cast it next turn, but with the cavern in play. We know about the chalice, but I think he, uh, Tyler doesn't care about the force of will. I'm a bit surprised it's still in there, particularly this late in the game. Or oh, Endbringer, that's going to end this game pretty quickly. It'll sh just shoot down the Snapcaster. Uh, he's going to have a Gurmag Angler. Okay, so the angler can... The angler's going to check that inbringer, but the, but the inbringer can actually just keep pinging him. You can see there, uh, every turn you can tap it do one damage to any target. So, Tyler... <sighs> Excuse me, Tyler has a win con on the board already, albeit a nine turn win con. Snapcaster. And and the other thing is that this end bringer untaps every turn as well, and it can draw you cards. And it's gonna check that Gurmag so it can't attack either. So he discards that chalice that wasn't really relevant at the stage of the game anyway. And here comes Ratchet Bomb. I don't think he's going to Ratchet to 7. I would be curious to know what number he's going to choose. I think 3. He'd be aiming for 3 because he's seen an ensnaring bridge. So again, he taps down the angler, or not taps, but targets the angler so that it can't play. Thought sees what a terrible draw at the stage of the game. You can see Tyler just getting the lands. He's waiting for, for a relevant win con. Now oh, he's pin, pinging him down to seven. Seven turn clock, tap down the angler again. Blood same might. All oh, the bad draws here for Matt Powell. Tyler just needs one card off the top, you'd imagine, to seal this one. So Ratchet Bomb goes to three, so he's safe from Ensnaring Bridge now. The other thing is that Matt's lost um, all four of his Baleful Strix, so he doesn't have the evasive creature anymore. Here's a, here's a huge endless one coming down. This, this will win the match right here. That's an 8-8. Eight, eight. Down to 6. So that's going to enable him to ping for 2 a turn, so I think he's got it locked up now. We're going to see a concession any moment. And that's it. Tyler wins 2-0.